Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're gonna have some fun today and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. One of the most common questions I get from budding artists is how do you get more color vibrancy in your paintings? Well, if you've ever asked that question, you'll be excited about this lesson. Let's get started. I often like to paint different color palette schemes with a variation on a similar theme, as in these five paintings of a little trail carving its way into the background of trees. And we're going to learn about a creative way and a neat tool that can help you to get very creative with new color palettes that you may have never tried. So here we go with a very fun, colorful, and educational lesson. Okay, so here's just a few examples of some paintings that I've done I'm calling it color palette roulette and you'll see why when I show you the little tool that I'm going to use but it's a great way to loosen up and get inspired perhaps to use color palettes you've never used before and it's also a neat way just to uh, break out of patterns and habits that we typically get into so it's a lot of fun but these are some of the different ones that I use based on this little tool called Palaton. It's a I'll show you on the screen, but it's a website that you can go to. Now, unfortunately, I have had some, some of my European subscribers uh, and Patreon members say that they, they couldn't get it where they were. Some of them said they could, so hopefully you can get it where you are. But I'm going to show you a quick little demonstration of how to use it and then why it's really neat to just play this color wheel roulette and have fun. Here we go. Here's a quick little tutorial on Palaton and how it works, but stay tuned. I do have painting demos coming next. Here we are on the Palaton.com website. Keep in mind that if you don't have access to this in whatever country you may be living with, you can literally follow along with us and sort of do the same thing on the color wheel. This main big wheel of color you see over here is uh, very similar in layout to a regular color wheel. So the concepts are the same regardless. But if you have access to this, I'm going to show you some really neat things. What is the most basic color palette? That's how it begins. It's called a monochromatic or one color palette. And let me introduce you to this little section up here above the color wheel with some color palette choices. So in the monochromatic, it comes onto this by default or automatically when you enter this website, and it's got a one color palette selection kind of right here in this red area, the primary color. Now we can change this by clicking this little bubble here and dragging it around to whatever monochromatic color we would like to use. Over to the right side of the screen, you will see the value display. And we basically have five values. Uh, pardon the little numbers that keep popping up. They're the uh, color numbers, I'm assuming. Um, we've got a basic middle value for the background here and up here. And then we have four different values ranging from light to dark. That's all that value means anyway, is the lightness or darkness of that particular color. So we have it displayed this way up here. And then in the box, we've got four larger swatches, two lighter values here and two a little bit darker values here. We have a reversed image of it in the corner. These are basically different ways for you to view it, all right? So, um, and once again, we can just spin this around to whatever color we want to choose. Now, I would go on to the next selection, which is right next to the monochromatic one, which is called adjacent colors. You see these three adjacent colors. But before I do that, there's actually another choice that's kind of right between these two. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to go back to the monochromatic and I'm going to click something. If you can see where I'm wiggling my mouse up here, I'm going to click. I wish I could figure out how to make my mouse big. All the, There it goes. We're going to click add complementary. Click. What did it just do? It basically took that red color that's here and it added the complement. All that means is the color that's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So the complement to red is green. And we can also, once again, spin this around, 
for any monochromatic color with its complement. And notice the complement is the one that's the smaller example right down here. All right, so that is a complementary color palette. Now we'll move on to the next one, which is adjacent colors. And in this example, there are three colors. Adjacent colors is also called analogous colors, often on a color wheel. We can once again spin this middle one around to make our own adjacent color selections. And we can also click Add Complementary to see the complement to the adjacent colors. So once again, adjacent colors are just colors that are next to, kind of in close proximity to each other on the color wheel. All right, let's take that complementary color away again. And let's go to the next color palette choice, which is a triad. Now we still have three colors in this one, but notice they are in the shape of a triangle. I'll show you later how we can actually control how wide this triangle is and uh, really customize this if you would like to. Again, here we go. We can spin this around to whatever triadic color palette you'd like to use. Now let's go to the next one, which is a tetrad. It's four. This one's more of a rectangle. We could also make it like a square. I'll show you again in a minute how you can customize this. And again, we can spin this around with our tetrad color selection. Now notice this one does not have a complementary option because the choices are already complements to each other. I think it's the same with this one. Uh, oh no, with the, I'm sorry, with the triad one, we can add a complementary color to it, all right? So the other option, we've got four options here. This last option is like a settings. It looks like little gears and cogs and wheels. And what we can do here is we can do freestyle, okay? So that means you can control this. You can hold the shift key and move the colors individually. This is how I said you can customize it. Let's say I wanna make this um, tetrad arrangement a little wider, not so adjacent colors here. So I can hold my shift key and I can move my colors a little wider. Whoops. And when you see that, it goes across to the value side. You just hold your, uh, I'll show you how to control that in a minute. This has to do with value. But when you go right outside the wheel, it'll pop right back. Now I'm going to make this one a little wider, more like a square color palette. Okay. And when I let go of the shift key, it will once again let me go to this main one and choose it um, with them all bound together. All right, so that's pretty interesting. So now that's how you can do a lot of the selecting. However, there's some other interesting options right up here. Uh, first of all, we've got a reset button, which is really kind of nice. If you've played around for a long time and you're like, oh my gosh, I've made a mess of things, I want to just start over, you can click reset. It'll take you right back to that monochromatic, monochromatic beginning selection. Now here's what I think is the fun part, is to truly play color palette roulette, is to let the computer decide. It's this randomize button up here, all right? So if we click randomize, it gives you four options. Now I'm not gonna go into what all of these are, but you can click them and have the computer play around with some color palettes. Now that one I definitely wouldn't do. That's just dark. Now look at that one. Isn't that interesting? If you wanted to just play around, pull out those colors and values, you can have a lot of fun. I'm going to show you in a minute how to control value a little bit too. Let's click um, this one and click more and just keep playing around with it. It's really, really a lot of fun. Oh, that's kind of neat. Kind of, this one's kind of like a high key color palette. Notice there's not a lot of dark values. That is a nice segue into another thing that we can control and view in this color palette um, picker on Palatine, which is value. Value, again, simply means lightness to darkness. Let me close this out. So right now we can see there's no dark values in here. Now notice this middle section. Once again, it will change if you go to the middle area. Notice how all of the value selections are all scrunched up here together in a lighter uh, side of value. Now you can see here the lighter values are over here on this left side and the darker values are more over in this area. This side has to, I don't want to get too deep here, this side has more to do with chroma. Um, this is more a neutrality over here. But let's go back, let's reset it again and I'm going to show you, but, but it's a high key color palette because these are all on the light side, alright? I actually think that's kind of pretty. I'd like to try to create a painting with that. Alright, so let's reset it. 
Once we reset it, we see the values have a nice even distribution here. We've got the middle value right here, which is this value in the main big square. We've got the two lighter values, which are these two to the top part here, kind of to the upper left, and then we, which would be these two here. And we've got the two darker values down in the bottom area here, which would be these over here. I hope your computer screens or phones are big enough to see where I'm <laughs> moving my mouse. All right, now if you want to adjust that, it's set automatically by default to go to this kind of really nice distribution of value. But let's say, you know, I want to do triad color palette. Let's click it here. I want to customize it and make these not so tight, not so adjacent. So I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to go a little wider with my triad. Yeah, that's what I want right there. Now, I really want to do this more high key, which means lighter values. I don't want there to be many dark values in this. And that usually happens when it's a bright, bright, sunshiny day and it drowns out all the darker values. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to move my values. Notice, now watch the lightest value in the right hand side. It's gonna get super white, you see that? Now the next one is the one that's right next to it on the left side of it. It's getting brighter too, you see that? Now this is the middle value one. You watch the big red square. I'm using the red just to give you guys something to relate to. Notice how light that got in value. Now, you see, we're still left with these two darker values over here. I'm still holding the shift key. I'm going to go back to the middle. It'll change back to this. And I'm going to move them to make that lighter. Now, we've still got that little dark guy right there. Let's move him. Move him up here. And now we've got a really nice high key painting. Isn't that nice? And you could do the same thing on the opposite side. I could take everything over further to the darker side. Say it's a really dark you want to create some mood. It's a dark street scene or something like that. And uh, that's a nice low key painting. So let me take it back over here to the high key just because I liked that one. It was kind of cool. And then I am going to spin it around a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Okay, so we got a nice high key. I'll make that one a little bit darker. Nice high key painting. Now, if I go back to the main color wheel, all you have to do is move your cursor or your mouse from here to the middle to change these and back to the color wheel. So we're going to take this main one and I'm going to spin it around. I can choose or let it by default or, or kind of glued together, choose the ones that I have already set. So I'm seeing a lot that, oh, that I really like. I just really like that. That's so pretty. All right. So now that you know a little bit more about how to use Palaton, and hopefully if you didn't have this option, you followed along somewhat to your color wheel, with your color wheel. By the way, the color wheel, the pocket color wheel I use has so many definitions on it and information. It's really, really a great tool. So whether you use this or the real color wheel, let's go back to the lesson and have some fun. And now the fun begins. In this lesson, I'm using mixed media paper, but you can really use whatever you have. This is not a medium specific lesson. You could do this with watercolor. I actually will be doing an eight by 10 format on this mixed media paper, and I'll be doing a watercolor underpainting, a complimentary underpainting, and then applying pastel. Okay, so here is my eight by 10 format. Here is my triad color wheel. Uh, palette scheme that I'm going to be using. And again, I've got the same idea or theme as some of these other paintings I'm doing. It's just some trees, a road. Um, the trees are on different levels. Um, some more trees in the background and a further distant either field or mountains or trees or something back there. Okay. So same idea, little bit different format. And uh, we're going to just kind of go with the general rule of thirds here, which, you know, you want your horizon line up here, and you don't always have to use this um, composition strategy, but it's a good one to use. All right, I know I've got a tree that I'm gonna have my bigger tree. I'm gonna try to exaggerate some of these trees here, okay? Then I'm gonna have another tree that's a little further away from that tree. Let's make this one kind of, well, a little further. He's gonna be a little bigger than that, okay? So you see how loose these can be. Let me make this one even a little bigger. Okay, and now we've got our road, which is basically just a road that kind of comes in. I'm going to make it kind of wide this time. 
comes in, goes back in the distance, and that's pretty much all you need there, okay? Now we're gonna have, I might curve it around a little bit more this way. Um, now we're gonna have our distant trees back here, some sort of um, basic tree shape, and then we'll have kind of some mountains or, or something back there. So that's it, that's pretty easy, right? So I'm not doing a wet uh, undercolor, I mean a, a, a wash, you know, um, because if I add too much water to this, um, this, pa this paper is probably going to buckle quite a bit. And your trees, you know, you can keep them very, very loose and energetic. As a matter of fact, that kind of helps with it. I wanted my tree to feel um, rather loose and free. Okay, so I'm even going to do, let me add a little dark down in here. Um, this one, I'm going to make it just a tad lighter back here. Some of this is going to get covered up, but um, it doesn't matter. This is really kind of to set the mood and uh, have some fun, okay? So this tree is going to be a little more back here like this, a little higher. Um, probably need to get this one lower and adjust my road a little bit, okay? And then um, I'm going to have um, these background trees won't be quite as dark as this. And so I'm gonna gradually come down and lighten it up a little bit, maybe like right in here somewhere. So here we got these background trees or mountains or whatever they are. And um, I do like to make my trees kind of go up um, on the edges rather than slope off. Uh, it's just kind of more interesting like that. And these things, even though I draw in my basic shape, they kind of evolve as they go along. All right, let's go ahead and get in. Um, the. Well, I'm going to wait on this to dry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get in whatever color I'm going to use for the, um, the grasses. Um, I think I will add another layer of um, some distant trees back in here that'll be a little darker in value. But again, I'm going to wait on that a little bit. So because things that are flat um, are typically lighter in value, because the sun's shining directly on them. Um, I'm actually gonna use a bigger brush for this. Also, use the biggest brush you can get away with. It's gonna force you, um, force your strokes to be really nice and loose and fun. Um, because this is the underpainting. You know, we can tighten things up later if we need to, if we even want to. And it's okay if I kind of blend those together there. Um, so I'm just kind of stroking this along back here having some fun, maybe gradually darkening it up as I get closer to the foreground. Get a little more water. And by the way, I'm just dipping this brush in water. And then if it's too wet, I dab it in the uh, on the paper towel I've got beneath me. Let me grab some of this color back here again where it's light. See, that's already kind of dried. And see this mixed media paper, you know, it really works pretty good. Fun. This is fun, that, and that's part of the goal of this, is to have some fun. Loosen up, oh my gosh. I have to tell myself that, and I've finally, over all these years, started to learn to play and just have a good time. It's okay if we add some of this other orange kind of in these trees here. All right, now, since that other part's kind of probably dry, I think I may add these this magenta and red color here. Maybe for some trees that are a little bit, well, they'd probably be larger back in here. And um, just another third row of trees. And then these lighter ones will be pushed back behind there. It gives the composition a little bit more interest. All right, so now for the, for the sky, I think I'll make a nice drippy sky. I'm just going to make kind of a, maybe this might be too dark in value. I want it light. And um, I can control the lightness with watercolor by how much water I put in it. However, if I put too much water in it, it's going to get too uh, runny and it's going to make that paper warp. Okay, so I'm just getting some of this yellow in here and I'm gonna let it just drip down in between these. Again, you might notice I've been kind of uh, strategically planning where my 
paints would go based on, got a little orange in there, but that's okay, I kinda like it, based on the drying time. I think I do, I might add a little bit more of that orange up in there, I like that, and then work my way down. I know this one's dry, but this right here is not quite dry, that's why I'm being careful about where to put it. Okay, maybe a little more orange up in here, a little in here, those are dry. Okay, all right, so now let's get in a color for that road. Uh, let's see, how about, you know, I really like this magenta color, but it's a little bit too dark. Um, let me see here. I think I'll do this yellow for the road, because the road is, this is going to be a road in this case, and some of these you can make them a, a river, you know, or a waterway, and um, that would be fun too. Now, I'm getting a little heavy-handed with the water, so it is getting a little bit um, buckly. With a regular watercolor paper, if your paper starts to warp or gets uh, buckled, um, you can flip it over and, um, and do water on the back of the paper, paint some water on the back, and it will um, flatten it right out. It's like a little magic trick, actually. <laughs> All right, we got a nice little uh, watercolor underpainting going here with some complimentary colors. We're gonna let that dry or blow dry it, and then we're gonna apply the clear gesso so that we can add some pastel. Here we go. All right, so the surface is dry now, and once again, just mixed media paper. These are for exercises, and I think it really does help us to loosen up when we know the surface is not that expensive. We're, we're just kind of playing, you know, so that's fun. All right, now this is the technique I share often with the clear gesso um, by Liquitex. There's other brands, but um, there are other ways to turn this into a surface that will receive pastel. This is just one of the least expensive ways. Um, and by the way, I share this all the time. You could totally just put past soft pastels on top of this but it's going to be very limited in how many layers you can get down and thus your colors won't be as rich and um, it's, it's really much better when you're using watercolor paper or regular paper um, to get more layers down. So you can either use the clear gesso like we talked about, which be sure to get the clear. For one, it's clear. You can see through your underpainting you've just done and it's got a little bit of grit to it, a little sand in it and that's what all of these have. I have a video, by the way, it's called Eight Ways to Make Your Own Pastel Surface. I'll put a little link up here in case you wanna reference it after you see this video. Um, but also I have other ways of making your own pastel paper and all of these are part of that video. One is by using this fine pumice gel, also by, or by Golden. I love the Golden Company. They have so many good products. And you can tint this. It's kind of a, a gray color. Um, but it's also got the sand in it. You can tint it with an acrylic paint, um, acrylic ink, um, various things you can do if you want to tint it, or you can just apply it and, and go for it. Um, this is another product by Golden. It's called Pastel Ground. I also like this, this product. It comes in a jar. I just got some samples from the company here. Um, and then there's another product called um, Col Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. This is a really good product. You paint it on your paper or your board. I like to use matte board, um, or you can use gator board. That way you have a sturdy surface and it's not gonna do this. But, um, but anyway, this is another great product that makes it very much like a pastel paper. It's fine tooth. And again, why would we do this? Because it's a lot less expensive. And I know there's a lot of people just trying to um, get a handle on pastels and, you know, some of us can't, don't have the means. When I first got started, and even now, I'm careful about the products I buy because they are so pricey. And um, I have to be, uh, I have to be cautious of that since both my husband and I lost our jobs due to COVID-19. So maybe that's why I'm always sharing these um, inexpensive ways to paint. All right, so I'm shaking up my liquid gesso right now. I'm going to use a little foam brush right here. I've been using a foam roller that's really good. When I have it flat, I can press it down really good. But, um, cause I've got to, my husband's coming home and I've got to get some dinner ready. I better just get to this here. All right, so I'm just putting it on here and I'm going to rub it on. Sometimes I would put it in a jar, but here lately I've just been rubbing it on here. Now it is picking up some of the watercolor but that's okay. Again, this is an underpainting and it's okay if it all kind of bleeds together a little bit. 
not that worried about it. But you may want to be cautious about not going back over light areas once you've gone over a dark area. And this will buckle up a little bit too, but that's all right. You see, it kind of made it nice and moody and impressionistic. Just going to see if I've got a good clear or even coat on this. And for one of the paintings I did recently, I used a really stiff brush, which gave it a, a textured look for the grasses I was using in the scene. All right, so there's our nice, loose um, liquid gesso application. Okay, so now I have it dry. It is a little bit buckled, but we're just gonna work around it and uh, have a good old time. All right, so here's my color palette here. And I'm gonna, once again, I know I'm wearing this set out, um, but I'm gonna use the 120 half stick set of Unisons. It's a great teaching set for me because I don't have to spend a lot of time going to my workshop palette and choosing colors. This has such a great assortment of colors, I can usually pull them out. So I, I might not even have to use anything else. So let's see. All right, I'm gonna first um, look at some of these colors up here and determine what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna use some of the darkest darks, I'm gonna use this dark blue that I had attempted to use before. I realized I needed to do a watercolor painting. So um, I'm gonna use that. And what I do typically, if I'm using a set like this and I don't wanna have to pull each color out, when I use a color, I just set it up like that. That way I know I'm. that's one that I'm in the process of using. So in case you're working from a set like that, that's kind of a neat idea. All right, so I'm gonna pull up some of the colors that I'm gonna use. Mostly, of course, you see it's in this blue family with some different values. And even though it's a triad color palette, you see the square, it's really three main colors because it, it shows the blue one twice. So it's it's these, it's green, blue, and magenta. Um, so, and within each square, it shows the different values that we're using. And I purposely chose the ones with a little bit of punch, um, like I can show you on the video how to do that. All right, so I've got some blues chosen. I'm gonna get some of these nice greens some really nice lime greens that are kind of nice. I may have to pull some from my other set because there's some that I don't quite have that color. All right, here's some of the magentas and pinks that I have pulled that I'll use. All right, so I'm gonna get started now. First, I'm gonna use uh, my darkest darks for this tree. I know these vertical things are going to be taller. Now I'm keeping a light touch here and uh, my tree is going to be not a tree that has like a, a single trunk with nothing around it. It's kind of a bushy tree. I like bushy trees. And it's, uh, it's a pretty big tree, so it's kind of going off the page here. And I can, you hear that scratchy sound? That's the, uh, the gesso. I'm going to go ahead and give some um, depth to these grasses right in here because they're always um, in the foreground there, a little bit darker, and um, you can see down into the depths of where some of the grasses are, if they're tall grasses like that. All right, so there's some of our little tree ideas. And I'm gonna go ahead, even though um, I'm gonna lighten these up, I'm gonna go ahead and get in those ones that I said I was gonna add another layer of trees kind of back here. Let's make this one a little bit wider here. Okay, and maybe just a whoop, I kicked my camera, a little something over here maybe. So that gives a little dimension to it. All right, so there's that darkest blue. Now I wanna take my dark magenta right here, and I wanna add some of that richness in here to this tree. That's kinda of like this color over there. And it really does make some color fun happen. Once again, this is just a theme. You come up with a little theme you can do. You can do mine, or you can um, come up with one that's your own. That's just a pretty simple theme that you can do with multiple paintings. Maybe a little bit of that. Again, I'm gonna lighten these up. These two trees look too much the same. I think I'll shorten that one when I add the sky or something. All right, and I didn't want samey samey over here so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that there or not all right so let's see now let me get some of that burgundy I got a little bit down here but I, I didn't get it over here all 
All right, now let's go ahead and get some of those um, background trees. And then we've got a layer of like mountains or something behind there. So what I'll do with those, let's look here. I wanna keep my warmer colors in the foreground, the greens in the foreground. So let me go ahead and get in a little bit of this magenta back there, and then I'll add some blue on top of it. So here's my next value of these pinks. And um, do I have any warmer? No, I gotta stick with this color palette. Um, I'm gonna put these in here for that other row of some trees that are happening back in here behind these, kind of peeking in. See, I'm just turning the pastel kind of over on its side. And um, I need to keep in mind, these would probably be a little shorter back there. Maybe not, could be some tall trees back there. Okay, so now we've got our next level um, back in here and they're gonna be quite a bit lighter. So I think this one's still a little too dark, but I, I might add a little a hint of that just for some color interest. You know what, maybe I won't add that third layer. I'm getting a little too complicated or muddy, but I'm gonna take some of this color here. This is just, oh, such a pretty color here. And I'm gonna just give me some, grassy feelings here. Give me a little bit of this um, kind of working its way up in here now because we're getting to a, a little bit of a lighter value. And I got some definite bumps going on, but I'm going to kind of press it out here. All right, now we're going to lighten up the background. And I got this lightest pink here. I will start using some greens in a minute. Oh, that's so pretty, isn't that a pretty color? All right, so we know that these are going to get lighter as they go back. Work it in, see I'm just, I'm using the side, but sometimes the side is too wide. Right here I can use the whole side, okay, the width of it. But like in here, I kind of have to lift up a little bit on the back. If you ever wonder, well, how are you doing that? Um, you get a little bit more finesse the more you do this stuff about how to use these, these tools. And usually things get more horizontal in the background and gradually they get a little more vertical as you move forward. So still got a little horizontal going on back here. And I would say, try to keep these to, um, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. So that um, you're not overworking these, you know, because it's supposed to be fun. All right, so there's that pink in there. And let me think about this road here. I got a little bit of a lighter pink here. It might not be a lot lighter. Actually, it's a little darker in value, but it's a nice color, isn't it? I think I'll get some of that in here working in the road in these grasses and trying to keep where you don't have a, a strict division um, from the road and the grass. You want it to be um, kind of a broken edge to that, to keep it very painterly. All right, getting some of that in there. I think I would like to get a little bit more of this nice color in here. For, look how that color changes. It almost turns to a purple. Isn't that cool? Love that. Oh my gosh, that looks just gorgeous. How fun is that? Whee! Man, it almost gets a little bluish color in there. And I know I'm going to have some shadowy sides. I think I'm going to have my light coming from this way. Um, I can lighten up some of these grasses a little bit. That means that this side of the, the road or the grasses is going to be a little darker. Um, And I'd probably be getting a little more light here, but I don't want to darken up that curve so much if the sunlight was coming down here. Okay, so let's play around. I've got some of this color back in there. Working. Oh yeah, that looks really nice down closer to the base of those trees down there. Again, it almost makes that purple. So don't, don't say you can't blend pastels because sometimes colors do make interesting combinations and um, and really change the color. Okay, so this one would be nice really for these trees back here. Remember I said I wanted them um, darker than some of this background stuff, but um, not as dark as these are gonna be. 
And um, I think I'll keep this one shorter and maybe this one a little bit taller. How about that? And work it in like that. And then uh, back here, same thing. I might have a tree kind of smaller, further away. Maybe a little bit of that happening in here. Peeking behind these. And everything is just very suggestive. Now that's a nice color too here for um, some of the shadows and these grassy side if our light source is coming from here. It's gonna gradually get lighter in value as it goes back. And you know, I think, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of the dark blue value in here. Is that a blue or a green? Yeah, that's the one I used. It's not a as blue as the one in the um, uh, in here. It's a little more blue green than here, but that's kind of all I had. I wish I had a one that was more blue. I think I'll go try to find one before I muddy this up too much. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a little more of a. It looks black here because it's so dark, but that's okay. So much is about value to establish that mood and sense of believability. Now let's go on to this next one that's a little bit of a, again, it's not quite as bright as this one, but that's okay. I'm gonna make this kind of some of these trees that were a little getting a little further away behind these. There's another row that's, and what that coolness and lighter value is gonna do is it's just going to press things back into the distance. It makes them look further away. All right, so there's that. Now I've got my next blue here. I haven't even gotten to the sky. And um, I'm gonna just peek in some of this in places. I'll work on sky holes later, the, the spaces between the trees. Notice I'm, I'm letting that pink show through. I haven't even gotten to the green and look how interesting it is already. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go with one of these light blues for the sky. I kind of like the pink though. Hmm, let's take a look at this. If I could do a combo, I would need a lighter pink like in here. So let me try, um, let me try kind of this pink here. Uh, I wanna keep it light down at the horizon. So I'll take this pink and just kind of scumble and do like a, a fractured sky. Oops, I'm getting some of that um, other color in there. See how this is a quite a bit of a darker value, so I think I want something a little lighter to mix in with that. Um, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of light um, down like right here, because I want that little glow over the trees. Now let me get that lightest blue, and let's see how this behaves. Oh yeah, see that? It's the same value, basically kind of close, and uh, what it does, we had a lesson on this um, in the Patreon album or Patreon uh, homework assignment or story time or something about um, fractured skies and how to achieve that when you can use different colors of the same value in the sky. All right, I'm gonna have to have a little more finesse with some of that. <laughs> this is a pretty dark green. Woo, that is a dark green. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, this is a softy. I think this is a great American. And beware if you're using great American on a prepared a paper you've made your own or really any, any of them, because uh, they are so soft that you really can't get a lot of layering after you use it. So just be careful. Um, all right, I'm gonna get a little bit of this in for grasses. I'm keeping a super, super light touch here. Some of these greens in. I'm working with warped paper, but I don't care. It's okay. Might make it look really cool. All right, so here's the next green. Um, and I know we're gradually getting some light on this tree, like it's just, working its way around, hitting some of these um, branches that are kind of sticking out here. 
and uh, up here we might be getting some light on this tree. These trees are pretty close in proximity, which is why the values haven't decreased a lot in going back because they're like one right after another, pretty close. All right, now I'm gonna work some of this green just up around this tree here, like big masses of grasses. I didn't mean to rhyme, but hey, why not? I think I need to spend some attention on this road here too. Okay, we got that green. Now I'm gonna gradually lighten my greens up. Quite a bit lighter, so maybe I'll use this one here. This, ooh, what a pretty bright green that is. You see that? We'll just play. Sound like Bob Ross. Let's play with the grasses. Now here's where we can come in here and just add some hints where the, the sun might be hitting some of this. We'll work some sky holes in later. We want to try to, what I want to try to do is sometimes I end up with a pattern even with the, um, the highlights that I add. So I want to be careful with that. All right, now these, I'm going to make these quite a bit lighter, kind of growing up over the trail. I'll speed up the last portion of this video, but you can see I've already used all three of the color selections of my Triad color palette that I chose from Palaton. And once again, you can do this with the color wheel if you are in an area where uh, you can't access Palaton. But it's very, uh, I would say, enlightening to play around with these and it really will cause you perhaps to use colors you wouldn't use before. Often we wouldn't even think of using some of the pinks and maybe even these super bold or, or bright greens that I'm using here uh, or maybe some of the brilliant blues that I've used. So I continue to work. I worked on the road a little bit, added a little bit more light or some of the lighter pink to the road. I also uh, carved in, did some tree hole carving. I added more of that beautiful blue to the shadowy side of the road. Remember that left side of the road was in shadow and uh, just kind of connected things together by incorporating the blue in various places. I often share in my videos that try to use some of the similar colors in other places so your painting doesn't feel disjointed and you can create a sense of harmony. So this was a lot of fun. I even actually decided I wanted to bring back some of that bright pink that I had in my underpainting. So I brought it back into the road a little bit and I think it gave it more life and energy. So uh, this was really a lot of fun. I recommend you give it a try. I think you will discover things, uh, new ways to create art with bright color palettes that you never would have tried before. Here's the final painting. I really enjoyed this. I did a total of five of them. So if you're a patron of mine, this will actually be your homework assignment. And if you're not a patron, please become one at this link right here. Thanks guys. Happy painting and happy color explorations.